if this movie does not prove why Christopher Nolan is one of the best, if not the best director working right now, I don't know what will. What is going on, film movie lovers, and welcome back to the Luke Ponto channel here to bring you guys another brand new movie review. If you guys are new here today, welcome. Hit that subscribe button down below and that notification bell right next to it. Hit that thumbs up and share this video. You guys know what to do. Oh my god, you guys, I am so freaking pumped right now because today on the docket, I am talking about Oppenheimer. Yep, m one of, if not my most anticipated movie of the summer of 2023. Of course, it is directed by Christopher Nolan, also written by him, and stars an impeccable cast. You got freaking Killian Murphy, Florence Pugh, Emily Blunt, Robert Downey Jr., Jack Quaid, J Josh Peck in a small role. My goodness, you guys. Stacked cast. But is this movie great, like I was hoping it would be? Let's find out. This movie, of course, tells the story of American scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer, played in this film by Killian Murphy, and his role in the development of the atomic bomb during World War II. To give you guys a little bit of background on Christopher Nolan, I am, like, I freaking love Christopher Nolan. He is one of my absolute film favorite filmmakers working today, because he has made some of my favorite films of all time, including The Prestige, which I honestly do consider to be his best movie. Um, you got the freaking Dark Knight trilogy, which are freaking fantastic movies, Inception, Tenet, and freaking Memento. Like, yeah, a lot of great films on his docket. And I really do enjoy Interstellar, but it's not my favorite, my personal favorite of his, to be honest with you guys. Like, that one, I really started to feel the runtime when it came to that one. And following, I think, was a fantastic first effort from Nolan. So, walking into this one, this one had a lot to prove. Because, once again, this film was shot on film like most of Nolan's films are. Pretty much all of them. They were pretty much all shot on film, which I think is perfect for this guy. And even then, this film had zero CGI shots. And I was just like, dude, are you serious? Not one single shot of the film is CGI. Oh my god, like, dude, I'm so freaking pumped. So I walk in, sit down in my seat in this theater and i gotta say you guys walking out of this film this is no one's best since the prestige like and i'm not kidding you this film is freaking amazing like and I, and just so you guys know i'm not gonna go ahead and just straight up call this film a masterpiece yet because it is a bit too early but i will tell you like right away before i just go ahead and spread all of my positives about this film. I have not one single issue with Oppenheimer. Not one single flaw. Like, there were some times actually where I was watching this film and I was looking for flaws. And when I, like as the film progressed on, I was like, there is not one single problem I have with this movie. Like, how does this happen? And this movie does prove to you why Christopher Nolan is still a master at his craft. And yeah, I mean, the direction from him is just freaking beautiful. Like, it is just so well done. He has probably written his best script by far, in my opinion. And the cinematography, man. Oh my god, the cinematography is freaking beautiful. Like, it is so beautifully shot. Like, oh my god, dude. Like, the cinematography just blew my mind. I was just like, wow. Wow. Whole, wow, what? And even the same thing with the film's um, overall score. Like the score for the film is freaking great, and it is the same composer that also did the score for Tenet. And it really shows, man, because it's like, dude, this guy can really do no wrong when it comes to these scores. And even some of the orchestral pieces for this movie is just beautiful to listen to. Like, I was just like, dude more scores like this like this is perfect now let's talk about some of these performances now a lot of people are in this movie like there's a lot of actors in this film and some of them really do not get a lot of screen time mostly because this is killian murphy aka j robert oppenheimer's story but first off like there is some great castings in here you got freaking josh peck in a small role you got jack quaid you got josh zuckerman josh hartnett 
Like, dude, there's a lot of actors in here. Rami Malek even turns in an excellent performance. Like, that's... Like, that's honestly no surprise to me, because I freaking love Rami Malek. And Alden Ehrenreich from earlier this year from Cocaine Bear also turned in a phenomenal performance. Pretty much everybody does. Casey Affleck with his limited amount of screen time. Kenneth Branagh as well. Pretty much everybody that they got for this film turned in their A game. Even Florence Pugh, like, which a lot of people are complaining that there's not enough of Florence Pugh in this movie, which I do understand. But I think with the screen time that she does have for this film worked perfectly you also got freaking like emily blunt as oppenheimer's wife and and for the amount of screen time that she has like you mostly see her in the background at some at certain points like when j like when j robert oppenheimer is going through questioning and even like for what she does throughout this film she works perfectly matt damon as well this movie will still also like continue to prove like why he, Matt Damon is one of my favorite actors working right now even with his performance in Air from earlier this year which was which is still in contention for my favorite performance of the year by a leading actor like he is so transformative in this film even if he might be one of the most recognizable people alive same thing with Emily Blunt he still can do like no wrong with his performances there are two people I've left out of this equation at the moment I wanted to save these two for last because these two performances blew my mind. First off, I want to talk about Robert Downey Jr. Like, now, look, I love him as Tony Stark in, in Iron Man. Like, I love him in those films. I love him in Tropic Thunder, and I love him in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and even some of his earlier works. But with this film, I honestly do think that Robert Downey Jr. may have just turned in the best performance of his entire career. Like... Don't be surprised if this man walks away with the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Like, not only will he, not only do I think he will get nominated, he may as well actually take the chance and actually get the win. Like, he might as well take that win. Like, because his performance in this film was just, oh my god, so freaking amazing. It was, it was just so great to see Robert Downey Jr. back in a movie, and like. Just this one really did prove to me like that he still got it as an actor. Like he still got it. And obviously the one that I forgot to talk about from leading up to this is obviously Killian Murphy playing as J. Robert Oppenheimer. This man. Like, this is his first leading performance in a Nolan film. And oh my god, what a performance this was. Like, dude. Killian Murphy might as well win Best Actor at this point, because I think right now he has turned in my favorite performance of the year by a leading actor. Killian Murphy really, really shows you that he is so dedicated to this film. And he looks exactly like J. Robert Oppenheimer. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. And I'm, I was so happy to see that Killian Murphy was able to get his time to shine in a Nolan film for a lead role. And he really brought it home with this movie. And I cannot be any happier with how great Killian Murphy was in this film and he is still one of my favorite actors working today but with this film man like he really brought it home pretty much everything about Oppenheimer I basically adore the cinematography the production design the set design the performances the score the cinematography the direction the writing pretty much everything about this film I adore go see Oppenheimer on the biggest screen possible I promise you guys you are not going to regret this experience because it is this is the this is basically the Top Gun Maverick of this year because this is one of those films I will absolutely tell you that is it is a must watch in theaters like there are going to be certain films where it's like yeah I would prefer to see it in theaters but you can still enjoy it at home but this one's like no you got to see this sucker on the biggest screen possible even in 70 millimeter like IMAX for for like your guys' kind of theaters, like you guys have got to go see this film on the biggest screen possible. It is an absolute experience. I am absolutely giving Oppenheimer an A plus. Second one this month, dude, and I am like, oh man, dude, this has been a jam packed summer. Like, seriously, it has been such a jam-packed summer filled with films that have just been coming out left and right, and most of them have, have really impressed me. Like, really, really impressed me. I cannot tell you enough. So, please, guys, even if you guys would like to go see Barbie, which I'm sure a lot of you are going to, 
again, like I said in my Barbie review or when it came to also this film, don't let this one go under your radar, you guys. Go see this movie. Like, And the ending to this film, no spoilers or anything, but it was haunting. I'm just telling you, I, I got teary-eyed, and I, w I felt haunted by then. <laughs> but, but, of course, joking aside, you guys, this is all, of course, my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of Oppenheimer. What is your, your favorite Christopher Nolan film? Is it something like The Prestige? Is it Interstellar? Is it Inception? Let me know all of that down in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button once again, that notification bar right next to it. Hit that thumbs up and share this video. You guys know what to do. And look forward to more videos hitting the channel here very, very soon including a review for The Haunted Mansion, which I will be posting next week. Look forward to that review coming up here fairly soon. Mutant Mayhem's coming up. We also got The Meg 2, Gran Turismo, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, Blue Beetle, Strays. So many movies to look forward to towards the end of the summer. Y'all are the best. And I'm always happy to see, have you guys come on the journey with me. Once again, y'all, thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to see more content from me, make sure you subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.